What's up, bros? I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we are a couple bros on a mission to give you guys the most detailed movie reviews out there with as little bias as possible. Welcome to the All Bros. Uh, this week on the podcast, in 4K Spotlight, we only have one movie coming out. Probably two. Rose isn't super good at filling in the, the blanks up. here. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> oh... So we'll be discussing that, and then we actually have a through-the-wall item to talk about this week, finally. Um, I'm biting my freaking tongue, because I'm so oh my excited gosh, to talk about this. It's, it's so good. It is so freaking good. Um, so yeah, we'll be talking about that, and then finally we'll be getting into this week's headliner, where we'll be breaking down The Lost City. So with that, let's say we get straight on into it. I'm super excited about this one. Yeah, let's do it. Hello, my name is Brecker Nurse, and I want to tell you about my fun horror movie podcast called Autopsy of a Horror Movie. On my show, I like to have fun dissecting out what makes a horror movie scary, what worked for it, what didn't, what types of fears does it play off of. Is it an allegory for any sort of message? I don't know, but let's find out. Also, I like to watch slashers. I'm a big slasher guy, so... I'll watch a slasher and do a kill grade for it. I will cover the kills and I will tell you how I would grade it based on shock, method, style points, and a fourth category that is a reflection of the movie. Besides those, I'll have fun with special topic episodes, commentary tracks, interviews with guests, including some Shutter directors, so I just like to have a fun time over here. If any of this sounds interesting to you or you just want to come check me out, please Head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere they listen to podcasts and search for Autopsy of a Horror Movie. Also, be sure to find me on Instagram, at Brucker Horror, where you get fun updates and some cool little posts that I do. Thanks for listening, and I hope that you get to enjoy the show, and I'll see you on Instagram. Bye. Alrighty, first up with 4K Spotlight, we have one new release this week, and Rose, would you like to tell everyone about it? I would love to. So, with this week coming to 4K and Blu-ray, we have Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, so, with this release, uh, we'll be getting a couple, c- couple, a couple of exclusives. No surprise there to literally anyone. Um, so, uh, we'll be getting a Best Buy exclusive Steelbook. Um, we will, uh, which I freaking love the cover, and I've already pre-ordered this. Shocker. Um, uh, so, yeah, and I'm pretty sure this is still up for pre-order, so if you guys want to go pre-order this Steelbook, uh, do so now. Because, I mean, I'm sure it will probably still be in stock, because they already always stock up on um, Marvel 4K Steelbooks, but you never know. Um, we'll also be getting a Target exclusive, um, and this Target exclusive, what does it come with? It is an art edition, and it includes exclusive original designs, uh, limited prints. Um, I'm sorry to say, Target's exclusives now kind of suck. They're not my forte anymore, um, and that's all I'm going to say about them, because I really don't have a lot of nice things to say about them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know, right? I'm so nice. So nice. Walmart's might... Well, no, actually, I don't know. Marvel's might not... Marvel. Walmart's might be tied with Target, because I still feel Best Buy comes out on top with their steelbooks, but Marvel is, like, on this... Not Marvel, goddammit! (sighs) Walmart is on this kick lately that with every Marvel or Disney movie, now they have to include a pin with um the uh uh with the 4k release then they consider that their exclusive so you know the eternals came with an eternal you know like an eternals pin uh encanto came with a pin of uh the casita and so uh this walmart exclusive for doctor strange and the multiverse of madness will come with a pin that looks like the eye of what is it agamotto that that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, it's it's cool. Like it's a, it's just, a cool pin, but just saying like, like throwing that in with a an exclusive that's stupid. Yeah, kind of how I felt about bucks. the uh, like. Remember the the pins that I got with the uh, GameStop Avengers game? 
Yeah, I do remember that. And then they had the patches, like, with the, the Walmart version. Yep. Like, it was so dumb. So freaking should've stupid. Should have gotten the Steelbook, man. Should have gotten the Steelbook. I know. I'm, I'm, it would, it I wouldn't say I'm regretting so nice it now because that Guardians game one. sucks. Fair. But yeah, the Guardians yeah, you, one. Oh, love the Guardians Did one. you freaking see the newest um, MCU costume they're adding to the game? Oh, shit. I vaguely remember that one. The Iron Man snap one? The Iron Man snap? Yeah, they're adding that. I didn't see that. Oh, uh, yeah, that that's... I think that comes out either tomorrow or the next day. Well, when we're recording this. Um, so, yeah. Is it with, but, like, his helmet on? No. Oh, so is it, like, Robert Downey's face, or... No, no, it's still oh. the in-game face. I don't give a shit then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the face is like not even uh, bruised or anything, but like, yeah, the whole suit is, of course. But stupid. That is so I don't know stupid. if it's still going on, but the last I saw on their Facebook page, all almost except for the Thor one from Thor: Love and Thunder, all MCU costumes are fifty percent off right now. Yeah, honestly, I only bought the the I bought the only one that I'd really want, other than maybe the first Avenger Captain America. The only one I really want, just because it's my favorite uh, of hers I've ever seen, is that Miss Marvel uh, costume. Ooh, that's a good one too. Right, I love. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. I mean, we're not going to talk about spoilers, but dude, finally finished it. Oh, so good. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait I, till season two. Well, I can't wait to see her in the, the Marvels. Yeah, I hope they do a season two. I hope, I yeah, I hope so, too. I hope so. I mean, unfortunately, it's the lowest watched uh, Marvel show That's thus far. bullshit, dude. This show I know, is so sucks. good. What's funny is everyone's making the meme, so it was Obi-Wan, since they both came out at the same time. <laughs> That's that's, that's such bullshit. It is because Miss Marvel is a very good show. If you guys haven't it is an watched amazing it, amazing show, dude. Like I had issues. One of my favorites. Like there were definitely some issues. Like the first three episodes, I was hooked. Four and five, I felt were a little fillery. Same and then here. The last one, freaking awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel the exact same way. Yeah. So, like we said, not getting into spoilers, but yeah, we'll definitely be talking about this later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. If you guys haven't checked it out, please go check it out because it deserves some love. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, um, man. yeah. Sorry, just one more thing. Iman, what is her name? Iman Vellani. Yeah. Did I say her name? She. Oh my god, she is the perfect Kamala Khan. Oh my god, I loved her in this show. So yeah. good. Her. Perfect. My only complaint with her. Yeah. Her acting was a little choppy at times. There were I never felt that. Really? I yeah, think it was no, I, I think it was for me throughout. it was like the selling the emotional scenes were a little tough. Okay. And I'm like like it wasn't like unwatchable. It's just something I noticed where I'm like eh, okay, like odd delivery there. Or but I mean, this everything is else her she first killed. big role. I know. Like so. I'm I'm cutting her like so much freaking slack. But, like, it's just something I noticed. I'm like, hopefully, like, you can get coached to so it's sure a little she, bit better. I'm sure she will. But anyway. um, And then one more exclusive. We have the uh, Disney Movie Insider exclusive, which I don't I mean, I know, like, uh, you know, you have to be part of the Disney Movie Insider Club to get this cover. Or Disney Movie Club, whatever. Um, but like, so I've tried to find. Um, so it's just an exclusive slipcover, and it's pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, but I remember when they did this for Encanto. Um, um, and I tried to like see if they had it on eBay, you know, just to see how much people were selling it for. Yeah, no one's selling these, so I don't know if people are actually hanging on to them, or they are just super limited, or they just didn't sell worth shit. Damn. So, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, if you guys are a Disney Movie Insider uh, member, 
you can get the exclusive slipcover. I think it's just a slipcover. I don't think it's actually. Or wait, no, you know what? It probably isn't even a slipcover. It's probably just like just different cover art because I forgot Disney now doesn't even do slipcovers on their Blu-rays. Just bullshit. <laughs> They'll do it on the 4K, but they won't do it on the Blu-ray. I get DVD. Nobody gives a shit about DVD. Sorry to all your DVD lovers. Shit, sorry. Um, did I just apologize to my freaking Gatorade pod? You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, am I? Oh, man. Okay, well. That just happened. Shit, um, man. It's barely 7.30 for you. <laughs> Shut up. It's been a long day. I can oh. see that. <laughs> um. So yeah, I don't really have anything else to say besides that because I just feel like a dumbass for that. But anyway, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness comes out tomorrow. Have you rewatched it since it came out on Disney Plus? I have not, actually. Have, have you? Have I? Like I I I want to, yeah. Because there's some things I feel like I missed, um, but yeah, I just haven't had the time to. I've watched the um Illuminati scene again just because I hate so much seeing my favorite Fantastic Four member just get literally freaking zoodled. <laughs> zoodled. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong whatsoever. <laughs> Oh, shit. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's uh, what's new for 4K. So, yeah. All righty. Well, uh, moving on to our Through the Wall, we got our official release. Kind of a teaser more than a trailer. But yeah. Yeah. So we got our first teaser for Halloween ends yesterday. And bro. Freaking, I sent Caleb the link, and I just attached the gif. Oh my god, it's happening! It's happening! <laughs> Stay calm! <laughs> dude, oh, dude I, w- yeah. I was afraid you weren't still awake. No, like, like, like you had, you'd sent it, like, right before I turned my phone off to go to bed. So yes! Oh. I, I was able to, to watch it. I love and it. dude, that was the shit. See, this is how you do a teaser trailer. You don't give a lot away, but you're still setting up a lot of tension. You're showing people what they want to see, but just quick glimpses. Literally, this movie, what we want to literally see is the final showdown between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. That's what we all want to see. Mm-hmm. And they are really showing that in this trailer because freaking Michael just literally chucks Laurie across a table. Freaking Dude. bad ass. Dude, it looks good. The mask seems like it's going to go through a couple iterations. Like, I don't know if you noticed that. Like, were there times where it seemed like the hair was, like, gone? I've been told that the only reason that is, I think, like, they've... Because it, it's still the same mask. That's what it, I It's thought. not a different mask at all. Um, I mean, I'm sure, like, you know, for how burned it was, I'm sure, like, it's probably gotten deformed. A little bit more, because in this one, this takes place four years after uh, Kills. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, so in the bio for the the bio for Halloween Ends, so Lori Strode is living with a- uh, Allison, um, and she's finally, like, decided to... Here, you know what, Can I... let me just pull up the bio, because I, I want to get your thoughts about it really quickly. Okay. Um, Allison is the granddaughter, correct? Yes. Okay, because, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Halloween Kills, he kills Lori's daughter, right? Yes, yeah, he kills Karen. Okay, he that was Karen. confirmed in the... I haven't seen the alternate ending yet. Or... Do, I mean, yeah, she still dies in that one. Okay. Um, But it's just so much better, because literally, you know, Lori calls her phone, and Michael picks up. And she just hears the breathing, and then she's just like, I'm coming for you, Michael, and throws the phone down. And you see her walking through the halls holding the butcher knife. Okay. Such a better ending, in my opinion. 
Yeah. Okay, let's. Yeah, the the ending that they went with. I'm I mean, I'm not sure. Like, I'm pretty sure we watched the theatrical release of it, right? Yes. Yeah, we watched the theatrical release. Okay. So yeah, if we um with watching that, the ending was very unclear about what happened to her. Yeah, that's what I hated. Like a lot of people have said Halloween Kills really feels like a middle chapter, and it really does. Well, but... it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh yeah, it really is. But like you definitely couldn't like, spoiler um... spoiler alert, guys, it is the middle chapter. <laughs> <laughs> but like you definitely couldn't say like oh yeah you know like I could watch this movie uh you know um apart from like with not seeing Halloween 2018 or Halloween ends no you have to see the other two to like really understand what the hell is going on oh yeah for sure okay sorry I had to go to its Facebook where is it oh my gosh where the hell am I Okay, here we go. Four years after the events of last year's Halloween Kills, Lori is living with her granddaughter, Allison, and is finishing writing her memoir. Hey, I love that she's writing a memoir. Yeah, uh, no, I feel like you should be hunting down Michael, but to each whatever. his own, I guess. <laughs> Michael Myers hasn't been seen since. Lori, after allowing the specter of evil... Sorry, the specter of Michael to determine and drive her reality for decades has decided to liberate herself from fear and rage and embrace life. But when a young man, Corey Cunningham, is accused of killing a boy he was babysitting, it ignites a cascade of violence and terror that will force Lori to finally confront the evil she can't control once and for all. Hmm. Yeah, so that is the official synopsis for Halloween Ends. Interesting. Yeah. I like how the people that have worked on this said that this is actually going to have an ending. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I appreciate that. I love how, like, everyone, literally everyone that's, like, seen, because they've, like, screened this movie for people, and they've shown two different, uh, two different versions of it. Um, and I feel like... One is saying, like, I think, like, they didn't love how, what they did with the ending, whereas the other one said, like, oh, yeah, no, like, this, like, truly feels like a Halloween movie, it's really everything you want, and yada, 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 but just everyone that's, like, seen each version of it's just like, oh, it's not what you're expecting. I'm like, okay, how am I supposed to take that? Like, what does that mean? (laughs) That is the worst possible thing you could say to us. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Does that mean, like, I swear, if I don't get closure on if, I'm sorry, if neither Michael or Lori dies in this movie, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> yep. One of them has to die. Yeah, like, preferably, at least for me, I feel like it should be Michael. Because then it can be, like, if it's yeah. if it's not Michael, it needs, to be bo- it needs to be both of them. Both of them would be I ideal. Would that. But that would I, be awesome. But... Worst case, it I th- for me it needs to be Michael because then it's just like okay now you can you don't have this looming shadow of Michael over your head anymore if because it's like he's been arrested if he gets arrested at the end that's bullshit yeah he's gonna break out in another f- okay no he's not gonna break out when he's freaking almost a hundred <laughs> yeah it's just it's just the only way that this ends is if he dies. Yeah, that's now whether or not they are ballsy enough to kill off Lori is what I'm looking forward to. This for, considering that they have said that this is like their final movie with their rights to the Halloween franchise. I don't know. I feel like considering they are so focused on that, this is our timeline. This is you know like where we wanted to take these movies and everything. I would feel ve- I I would be very shocked if Michael didn't die. <laughs> Just, I would too. If he did, I feel like, there has to be... be that closure. Yeah, it, it has to. Like, yeah. there's no other possible ending that you could offer us that would satisfy us in any way, shape, or form. Because then Don't we're just like, wrong. okay, so what happens now? Like, he yeah, if, exactly. if they take him alive, it's like, okay, so now what? He's taken alive. Like, he's going to get out. <laughs> as long as they don't freaking do what they did in Halloween Five. 
Have I shown you Halloween 5? Um, I'm pretty sure you have. Do you remember, like, at the ending when he's a, he gets arrested? Yes. Literally, this... <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. They still have him wearing his mask when he's in a jail cell handcuffed. <laughs> Why wouldn't you take that shit off? Who the <laughs> hell keeps movie. his mask on? Like, even freaking, uh, like, um... Kills even shows after like he like is like freaking smacked to the ground. That's one of the first things that they take. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, wait, no, maybe that was I just read that in the book. I don't know if they actually showed that in the movie. I think they did. I think they they did. If I remember right, I think they were like beating him with shit, and then someone took took his mask, and then he just went freaking ham on them, and like beat the living shit out of them. It was either that or like they ripped his his mask off, and then he was like. Eh, and got beat up by the mob, and then when they I were don't like, think oh, it's he's ever dead. ripped. Yeah, I don't think they they ever rip it off at the mob scene. But I swear, like when they're doing like the flashbacks to seventy eight, one of the officers does take it off at, once he gets apprehended, and they kind of like hold it up as a trophy. Yeah, that that definitely okay. happens. It's okay. just that mob scene. I'm not quite remembering super well the mob scene one is like yeah they literally beat the shit out of him and karen stabs the knife into his back but then instead of you know making sure that he's dead you know like giving him a couple bullet holes to the the head freaking oh my god sure freaking bracket just reaches over and michael just grabs the knife out of his back and slits his throat and then just goes <laughs> freaking ham on everyone it's like are you how do you feel this stupid <laughs> dude have you ever watched the second um Zombie Land. I haven't even seen the first. <laughs> okay, so in the in Zombie Land, they have this rule called the double tap. Okay. Where it's when you kill a zombie, you have to make sure you pop one in their head too. Yeah. And so it's just like that makes that's sense. That's that's when I, when we were watching that. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, freaking double tap that bitch. <laughs> He is the embodiment of pure evil, people. Yeah, no one's going to judge you for popping a cap in his ass. <laughs> no. They're going to thank you for finally putting an end to his terror. Yeah, like if you're if you're freaking unloading like a a revolver on him, like maybe that might be a little far, but no I don't know. I don't think anyone popping... would yeah, like okay, maybe in that in that is instance. No, I don't think but... anyone's gonna really bat an eye if you're literally just taking a shotgun to Michael Myers. Yeah, I mean the shotgun makes sense. Like, but yeah. I'm thinking like if you have like a low caliber weapon, just popping a couple. Like if you just bop bop. Like, no, I don't think anyone wouldn't bat an eye. But if you're sitting yeah. there, bop 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 bop, I think someone would be like, okay, we're done. <laughs> Then you just hear he's the dead, sirens and everyone's like, scatter! <laughs> oh, man. The... Yeah, this... But yeah, oh, I, I'm pumped for this. I am... T- freaking... I told Caleb, there's a there's a, a scene towards the end where Laurie's standing in, a, in the hallway as Michael's approaching her. And hearing Laurie Strode just say, come and get me, motherfucker. Just, I got freaking chills. And I got so freaking excited. <laughs> Oh my Dude, god. It seems like it's going to be an epic fight. Oh, this, yeah, this is the horror showdown to end all showdowns. Well, I mean, okay, you got Freddy versus Jason, but, like, still. This yeah, movie's going to, like, show why Laurie Strode is the final, uh, final girl. She is the number it's, one. Final it's girl. going to be interesting because are they going to do the thing that I feel like they've done really well at, which is, are they going to continue to make it be like, Michael doesn't give a shit about Lori? That's a good question. I don't know. Cause I don't think Michael has a vendetta. I think the only re like in that instance with like that alternate ending where he picked up the phone, I don't think that he picked up the phone because it was he knew it was Lori on the other line. I think he picked up the phone just because he wanted to hear the hurt. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. And then, yeah. So I think it was just, it's just that. I think he likes to, um, 
maybe do like a little reflection on his kills in a way. It was kind of oh sorry, or like maybe like a study of it and just kind of like yeah. admire like his work. And I think that that was just kind the of part of it. That's why he picked till... up the phone. I think that's God, why he picked that? up the phone just to hear some of the the hurt I that, see that he caused from that. So I, I I'm pretty sure it's going to be another instance where it was like the first one where Lori was kind of um bringing or luring uh Michael to her. Yeah. Well, because yeah, like or, in Halloween. Actually, she, that didn't even happen. She, he, yeah, Michael no, was brought to her. Yeah, yeah, his doctor brought him. Because I, uh, I don't know if you remember in Halloween Kills how Hawkins literally tells Lori, "It's not about you. He's not after you. Literally, he's he's just an animal. He's he's a six year old boy with the strength of a man. No one knows why he kills." Yeah. So I hope they keep with that theme because if it's like four years later, Michael's finally back at like max strength and ready to go take on Lori. I think that would just feel a little weird. I think it Fair. needs to feel like Michael doesn't give a shit. Like it, I think it just needs to feel like Lori's in the way and that's why Michael's going after her. I think someone said that um, Michael will uh, be a little bit slower in this one just because after four years, he, yeah, he, <laughs> he, like he's, after four years, like even you know, and of course not getting hospital treatment. I'm assuming he's really starting to feel his wounds. Fair, yeah, totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, mother, mother F- I hope he's like smart right enough to put in like some armor or something. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably not. Dude, freaking the scene where they're fighting over who gets to put their hand in the garbage disposal. <laughs> yeah. That was insane. Oh, God. Such a great teaser trailer. So, so good. Yeah, I'm I'm so freaking pumped. Oh, yeah, like, me too. So, this is my number I don't one think... movie of the year. It always has been, and I'm even more excited now. Yeah. So, I think with that, I don't even need to ask you what your excitement level is out of 10. Nope. Nope. An 11. Yeah, um, I'm honestly about that same level, too. Like, it, this was the perfect teaser. It gave me just enough to get interested and be like, oh, shit, like, shit, like, it's about to go down. And that's what I'm I'm ready for. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Their saga ends, or what? If, I forget the tagline they're using for this. It's not, I think, I think it's their story ends. I think that's what they're saying. Yeah, I don't quite remember. But, yeah. So, that covers everything in Through the Wall, unless you had anything else to add. No, just, you know, I'm still trying to recover from how amazing that trailer <laughs> was. Oh, uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame <laughs> you one bit. All right, well, with that, let's say we move on to this week's headliner. Let's do it. Son of a bitch, I pushed the wrong one. (laughs) Alrighty, for this week's headliner, like we said, we will be breaking down The Lost City. So this movie came out this year? Yes. Yeah, for some reason I thought it was like really late 2021, but yeah, so this movie came out this this year, uh 2022 and stars Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum and this is the crazy like romantic comedy version of National Treasure. So that's a good way to put it. Yeah, kind of like it's. I like that. It's a fun movie. It's a it's a really yeah. fun movie. Um, but anyway, if you guys are new to our breakdown system, uh, how we score movies, we have split them into eight different categories that we individually score to come to a final All Bros 
letter grade. Uh, the eight categories that we score are story, writing, acting, character development, effects, music, costumes, and then we give it our own personal score at the very end. All of those numbers get added up and thrown into our algorithm that spits out a schoolhouse grade for us to compare this movie to others. So, with that, if you have not seen The Lost City, definitely go check it out. Um, and then come back Some and listen point. to this. So don't, yeah, don't don't spoil it for yourself. Yeah. Even though I don't think there's a whole lot to spoil, there really isn't. But still, go and go have a good time with this one. Yeah, go have fun with this movie, and then come back and listen to us if you so choose. Um, so if you listen past this point and anything about this movie is spoiled for you, sorry to tell you, it's your own damn fault. Tough tits. Tough tits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, with that, Rose is about to read off the synopsis for this film. So, Rose, would you like to give us our Reading with Rose segment? I would love to. Let's see if I can F it up as much as I did last week with Thor. That was rough. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shut up, asshole. <laughs> uh, all right. Dr. Loretta Sage writes romance adventure novels centered around a fictional heroine, Dr. Angela Lovemore, and her romantic interest, Dash McMahon. McMahon? McMahon? Do you remember how he said his last name? Um. Nope. <laughs> well, shit. Wait, what? Maybe McMahon? You know what, let's, yeah, Dash McMahon, let's go with that. Uh, to promote the latest book on Love More, her publisher, Beth Hatton, insists that Loretta embark on a book tour with Alan Capri- Caprison? Or, I swear it wasn't Caprison, right? I'm going to pull this up with you. <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm butchering this so bad. Yeah, I only, like, whenever you you do these... I only ever have IMDb open, and IMDb doesn't give me nearly as much stuff to do or to look at as, yeah, as, so one second. Okay, so yeah, Dash McMahon is how I would pronounce that. Okay. And then which one were you on? (laughs) Uh, uh, Alan Caprison. Sure. Okay, so we're not going to say Capri. Or maybe Son. Caprison? Or Capri- I don't know. His name's Alan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just go with Alan Caprison. I like that. All right, book tour with Alan Caprison, the book's cover model for Dash, despite her reclusiveness since the death of her husband. After a disastrous start, mostly due to popularity of Alan Dash's persona, Loretta is taken by Abigail Fairfax, a billionaire who realizes that Loretta based her books on actual historic research she did with her late archaeologist husband. He discovered a lost city on a remote Atlantic island and is convinced the Crown of Fire, a priceless treasure, is located there. When she declines to help decipher an ancient map to the treasure, Fairfax, fearing an active volcano will destroy the site, chloroforms and takes Loretta to the island. Alan, who is secretly enamored with Loretta, witnesses her kidnapping. He recruits Jack Trainer, a former Navy SEAL turned CIA operative, to meet him on the island and coordinate a rescue. Jack, with no assistance from Alan, breaches Fairfax's compound and frees Loretta, but is shot dead before they can make it to the airport, forcing Loretta and Alan to escape into the jungle. Loretta and Alan spend a day fighting off Fairfax's men before reaching a nearby village, where upon hearing a folk song from a from a local, Loretta de- deduces that the crown is hidden in a C-note in the jungle. Before they can leave, however, Fairfax captures her again, so a chase by Alan to save Loretta ensues. The two are then forced to share the treasure location with Fairfax. Upon reaching the location, they discover the tomb is not a monument to Taha, wait, is not a monument to Taha and Calamon's power, but a hiding place for the queen to grieve for her husband. Her crown of fire was made of red seashells gathered by him as a sign of his love for her. The actual treasure of the legend was not a priceless jewel, but the inseparable love between the king and queen. 
Infuriated, Fairfax forces Loretta and Alan into the tomb as the volcano erupts, but Rafi, one of the men, has a change of heart and leaves a crowbar to help them escape before abandoning Fairfax on the island. Beth arrives with the local Coast Guard and Fairfax is arrested. Loretta's next book, based on her adventures with Alan, is a hit and they share a kiss at the end of their next book tour. In a mid credit scene, Loretta and Alan attend Wow. In a mid credit scene, Loretta and Alan attend a yoga class and see a vision of Jack's spirit. <laughs> this was a fun movie. Yeah, no, 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 I had a very good time with it. Yeah, um, like, if you go into this movie expecting any, like, Oscar-worthy shit, you're going to be deeply disappointed. Yeah. But for what this movie was, they I think they did a really good job with it. They they, they really did. Um, yeah, I, I never thought of a, uh, well, I don't know, has that already been done in a movie where a fantasy writer is sweeped away into literally having to live through what she writes her books about. I feel like it has. I couldn't give you an instance of it. Okay. But yes, I I do feel like that is something that um has been done before. But or maybe it's even like someone has read a fantasy book and then like gone off of that. So it it's not out, out of the realm of possibility. Okay. Um, I would say, but yeah, it it is something that does feel like kind of has a cliche about it, but it's like, oh, well, there's, it's just stories. And then it's like, it's not just stories. And like, I think it's been done with like fairy tales before and just other writings. Um, but yeah. So uh, the, what I really appreciated about this is it kind of, you didn't quite know where to set your expectations with it. Like you, they kind of lead you into thinking that there's this billionaire who's going after this priceless crown. And then like this said, the, the crown just ends up being a crown of seashells of red seashells to symbolize their love, which is like the ultimate treasure. And, like just romantic comedy bullshit, <laughs> but I loved it. I ate it up. Yeah, I I totally did too. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm such a sucker for a good romantic comedy. Same here. Or just like romantic movies in general. I'm such a sucker for it. I mean, dear John, not dear John. Or oh, wait, what what was your go to movie when you're sick? <laughs> the Notebook. <Is> <laughs> The Notebook, that's what it is, not dear John. I love it. Yeah, yeah, no apologies for that, like, none whatsoever. Hell no, dude, don't (laughs) apologize for that shit. That's freaking awesome. But, like, I freaking ate that shit up at the end. I was just like, oh my god, like, it's so sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, like, I love that. Like, it just... All this crazy shit that happened was just, it it didn't feel too forced. I feel like the adventure didn't seem too forced. I think the only thing that felt super forced was the relationship between um, Loretta and Alan. Yeah, I can absolutely agree with that. Like, it's just kind of... It it was kind of weird, for at least from my perspective. Like I understand, and I probably would have been completely fine if they were to be like, "Oh, uh, Loretta freaking calls Alan out on being nothing but a pretty face," and then when she gets kidnapped, he's just like, "I'll freaking prove it." To her that I'm more than just a pretty face and then going after her. But just having that little thing where he's like, oh, he's always kind of liked her. It's like, but why, though? <laughs> yeah, exactly. She, She's kind of a dick to you, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, it, and if they would have, if he would have grown into that, like, that love for her or that the crush, if he would have grown into the crush... 
I think that would have been a lot more understandable. Yeah, no, no, I absolutely agree. Like, it's kind of like, oh, they have, like, they, if they, it would have just been like, they, they don't like each other, and then at the end, they, they like each other, I would have been totally fine with that. It's just the fact that he had a crush on her for all these years while she, while she's writing these books. It's just, but why? (laughs) Yeah. That does, that part just did not make sense to me. Um, like, just trying to, like, and I, I think a lot of that stuff, like those issues, were more writing problems than story problems. Uh, I mean, it's part of the story, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, I think... Do you feel that they could have fixed it at all? That, like, maybe it would have made more sense about her? her, Sorry, her. About him liking her? Like, could they have set it up? Can you think of, like, any way they could have set it up better? That's a tough one. I don't. I don't quite know if they if they could have done that, unless she was kind of like. Unless she was into him too, but just kind of like re- trying to reject those feelings because she felt like it was a betrayal of her. Uh, of her departed husband. Yeah, no, I like maybe like when they're uh, doing that uh, interview and like you kind of like see like her kind of get like lost looking at him and like the announcer has to be like, hey, Laura, you here? Yeah, like just like showing that she kind of had like kind of showing that it's a mutual crush. Yeah, I think would have helped a lot and it would have been just a small fix. But it's just the fact that she she had no interest in him whatsoever and he like had all the interest in the world yeah so it in that instance i think it would have made sense for her to have a crush as well and then it would have you could have gone the entire story like do the exact same thing but it just felt like even like maybe halfway through that she still wasn't quite interested yeah, I really did. It it just, eh, not my favorite. At no, least not my, my at least not my favorite either. setup. Like it eventually got yeah. to a point where I'm like, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm okay with this. Yeah, but I think a mutual crush would have helped, and just her struggling with those feelings throughout. Because, I mean, she, she moves past it. It's true, she does. So, like, she she kind of gets over those feelings of, mo- of feeling like she can move on. It's just, it would have made sense earlier. So, that's probably how I would have done it. Just, okay. Um, just not shoehorning that in at the at the very end. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I I can absolutely agree with that. Yeah, how do you feel about uh Daniel uh, or the um character that they wrote uh for Daniel Radcliffe as the villain? Not looking I at his acting, really just like the villain. Yeah? yeah, yeah. I it's hard for me to see Daniel Radcliffe as a villain, but I Dude, think he though. did a really good job. It's so hard to look past him doing anything besides Harry Potter. <laughs> I know. If you've watched some of the indie shit that he does, like... Oh, like the peanut butter... F- not, no, it's not that. No, that was Shia LaBeouf. The yeah. uh, the Swiss Army Man. That's what it is. Yeah, but like shit like that, or um, there's one where he has like guns screwed to his hand. I haven't seen oh, that, that one yet. Cool. But it's just... Y- you can get out of that feeling of it being like, oh, Harry Potter. <laughs> okay. Um, like I'm, I've worked myself up to being able to see him outside of Harry Potter. I feel that's good. Um, but yeah, I think he made a pretty good villain that led the story where it needed to go. Um, like sharing this, this story of this priceless, um, artifact that he's been hunting for who knows how long and putting 
all these crazy amounts of resources into finding and realizing like oh i only have this like one chance to find it and like it's it's kind of understandable like he's kind of just a spoiled brat that (laughs) is trying to like obtain this thing to gain favor i guess in his father's eyes maybe yeah i think so but i it I thought it was it was really interesting. There was a a lot of stuff was done really interesting. The I think where this movie kind of fell apart was mostly in the writing, but I feel like the story was pretty strong. Yeah, I agree. I mean, honestly, I feel like it was a very ballsy move, uh, story wise, to literally take away the person that was going to get them out of there, literally within the the first five minutes of them saving sandra bullock's character they straight up <laughs> i was not expecting i'm like oh damn yeah i like i figured something would happen to him i did not expect it that soon yeah same so yeah that took me like crazy by surprise <laughs> and i think that just helped the story move along in like a more interesting way oh yeah absolutely because I, I, it's almost like I feel like the whole the jealousy that Alan was having with that guy, what was his name, Jack? Yeah. I think the jealousy that he had towards Jack, I think that could have been played really poorly. Like if I think that that joke could have gone on way too long, and just the and just that they cut it off so abruptly somehow made it even funnier yeah so i i really liked liked how they how they did that um yeah i mean the the adventure the the clues that they were able to follow i feel like the clues were a little lazily done like i think that's fair i think there could have been a little bit more finding clues and puzzles and stuff because it just felt like oh this led to a dead end and now we're listening to a um a folk song and then it's like oh and then they were suddenly able to find the treasure yeah and it just kind of felt like eh that a little lazy there (laughs) no i can absolutely agree with you there yeah so what are you thinking with the story I'd say I'm in the low 80s. So I did have a good time with the story overall. It, it was a good time. Um, so, you know, I'm going to go an 81. Um, if I could. It's not a bad score. I might go a couple points higher than you, though. Like, I was really impressed with the story. So, I mean, where I'm kind of being nice with the story, I'm not going to be very nice with the writing. <laughs> So I think I'm going to go maybe an 83. Okay. All right, that averages us out to an 82 for story. Uh, next up, we got writing. The And like I said, this is where the movie kind of falls apart. <laughs> yeah, I can absolutely agree with you there. Now, don't get me wrong. The dialogue, not awful. N- no. Um just i don't know maybe i don't think it i don't think it had anything to do with the acting i think it's just how the characters are written with the, their lines but just some scenes between channing tatum and sandra bullock just the way that their character were written it's just it was some awkward dialogue it was and extremely it's not, and it's not supposed to be i don't feel it was like there was a lot of the um the romantic scenes or yeah. Not romantic. I'd say more the more vulnerable scenes that they were having. I think those just came off as super awkward. Yeah. And just like I, you've. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying. Like, I don't think that that's an acting problem. It's just like it either went into too much detail, or just went on for too long. Yeah. No. No. I absolutely agree. 
freaking i don't know maybe it's just me but like considering how long that he's been playing dash on her press tours you think that most of their conversations wouldn't be awkward considering they've gotten to know each other yeah it almost kind of felt like they were like new acquaintances yeah it's like how many books has she wrote with this character (laughs) yeah exactly so it's just not super impressed uh, writing wise, it, like a lot of that dialogue was funky. Uh, a lot of Daniel Radcliffe's was funky too. It's just, yeah, they just took him a little too bratty and a little too on the evil side. Like, it, I don't know what it is. I think Marvel has kind of spoiled me when it comes to like really well written prota- uh, or not protagonists antagonists that i i want to relate to them and with this dude i didn't relate to he was just jealous of his brother yeah like and that's true just it didn't work out it didn't work for me i honestly feel the same way with you with marvel because literally the only other like genre i can think of where you know you're thinking about the bad guy are horror movies and you don't want to relate to the bad people in those movies yeah it's just a good a well-written antagonist i feel can make and break a movie absolutely and he was well written and what just look at thanos with the infinity saga yeah no shit um but i don't think he was super well written here it it got to the point with him where it felt like he was repeating the same thing over and over and over again. It did. And I know <laughs> that kind of an ironic thing to say because I feel like we do that occasionally. <laughs> say the same Fair. thing over and over and over. <laughs> Good point. So it's, it's kind of funny to for me to Way be to call like, yourself out. Yeah, I know. Like, I, f- I feel like we can be... We could be accused of that <laughs> occasionally. How like I've listened it? back to a few episodes. Like they're like way older ones, so I, I, I'm not super f- familiar with how we do it now. But our older episodes, I'm just like, gosh, you just said that, Caleb. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I've gotten better oh, or funny. worse about that. <laughs> I hope that's I've gotten funny. better. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, like, you've been super good about it. Like, you don't repeat yourself that often. Like, if you do, it's maybe, like, really? once. At I'm least in the... surprised. The, yeah, at least in the ones that I've listened to. But, okay. yeah, myself, I'm just... <laughs> I have to... I get so irritated with myself. <laughs> like, I can't You're believe people great, actually Caleb, listen to stop. this. <laughs> You're doing great. Stop. <laughs> I know, I'm just super overcritical of myself. I mean, so. But anyway, getting back into what I'm supposed to be critical about. <laughs> I know, um, we're not here to review a movie. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to turn into an All Bros breakdown of the All Bros. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so funny. <laughs> Dude, that would be a really funny April Fool's episode Dude, to do. <laughs> Literally just critiquing our, like, first five episodes. That'd be hilarious. That would be so much fun. I, I'd be That's down. not a bad idea. That isn't a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it You've out. We've come so far. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, anyway. Uh, getting back to writing. The... For whatever reason, I feel like the extras were written better. Yeah, you know what? You got a point there. Like, I feel like the... What's his face? Jack? Yeah. Was written really well (laughs) until he got killed off. He was, actually. And then her manager was written really well. Oh my god, I loved her. Yeah, so it's like... The people that were supposed to be the main focus... Just didn't get as good of writing and dialogue as the people that were filler. (laughs) Yeah. As far as I know, that's not how a movie script works. 
Yeah, it's not how it's supposed to work. Yeah. So I think I'm I'm significantly lower with writing. I'm probably not as low as you are, <laughs> but what what are you still, thinking? I'm like in I like the the mid seventies. I don't really oh, well, think that's where I'm at too. Oh, you are okay. Yeah, like I I just feel like anything like. <laughs> Because usually, like, if we feel like the story's, like, pretty in line, like, even, like, a little bit worse or a little bit better, it's usually within a couple points. So anything outside of that couple points, I feel, is, like, a significant drop. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm in the mid-70s, too. I'm at, like, a 76. I'm probably going the other direction. Okay. Of 75, so I think I'm going to be down at like a 74. Fair enough. Yeah, so that averages us out to a 75 for writing. Uh, moving on over to acting, we have Sandra Bullock, who played Loretta Sage, Channing Tatum, who played Alan, or his counterpart Dash. We have Daniel Radcliffe, who played Abigail Fairfax. Um, and then for a couple of the extras, we have Divine Joy Randolph, who played Beth Hatton, who was Loretta Sage's manager. And then we have Brad Pitt, who played Jack Trainer, who was the special forces guy that was sent to save Loretta. <laughs> <laughs> then other than that, I don't think there was... Anyone else? Yeah, I agree. I can't think of anybody else that stood out. Yeah. So let's go. Let's let's go top three. Okay. Uh, number three, Sandra Bullock. Really? Yeah. Okay. Number Explain two. That. Wait, what? Explain that one. I don't know, don't get me wrong, I love Sandra Bullock. Um she's amazing. Um but I don't know, just there were other two other performances that I just liked a little more. Okay. Um two Channing Tatum. And number one, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. I I I I'm swapping Sandra and Channing, but Okay. Totally agree. Daniel yeah, Radcliffe yeah, was amazing. It. He was, I, I, like I said, it's very hard to not see him as Harry Potter, but when I see him in like anything different, I just, he's a great actor and I loved him in this movie. I, I highly suggest you look at his work outside of the Harry Potter films because okay, well. like you, like you nailed it on the head. He is an incredible actor. Like he's able to play so many different types of characters, other than the one, the boy who lived. Yeah, and I think it's I mean, it's tough because I love seeing actors in roles like that where they're playing the same character for years. But it's interesting to see them go outside of that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I I love it. It's just. It's tough for them to for them to feel like, oh, they can do other shit other than like he can do shit outside of Harry Potter when he's done a Harry Potter for years on end. Yeah. From the time he was 12 to when he was in his 20s. Mhm. Mm like damn near a whole decade. Yeah. Wasn't it a whole decade? I don't know if it was exactly like it was close to. Oh, it was definitely yeah. close. Yeah, it I was don't... yeah, cuz yeah, because didn't the first one come out? In... Well, wait, when did the Sorcerer's Stone come out? Ooh. Because the Deathly Hallows Part 2 came out in 2011. So I think the first one may have come out in 2001? Maybe 2002? I, I swear the Chamber of Secrets came out in 2002. If that's the case, then, it, then Sorcerer's Stone came out in 2001. If Google wants to work for me. Yeah, 2001. So. Okay, so, so yeah, exactly so, a decade. 
Yeah. Okay. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Wow. I can't. Why didn't I not remember that? Yeah, we had a decade of Harry Potter. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome though. It was a good. You gotta ride. think it was too. Ride. He was he was working alongside some incredible actors and actresses. That so is he true. probably got lots of coaching from everyone. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Because I put him alongside people like, San, like, talking about in the Harry Potter universe, like, Helena Bonham Carter. Like, I put him up on the same level as her, and same thing with Gary Oldman. Like his, his acting, especially in the last two parts, is fantastic. It's so good. Mm-hmm. But let's not forget his amazing performance in the Playmobil movie. <laughs> Good hell. That was just a bad decision on his part. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to forget that you ever did that, Radcliffe. Yeah. We will happily. That's, that's a good thing, too, because <laughs> when he does shit like that, it's like you can fall back on Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's not his best work. <laughs> But you saw these other eight movies, right? I mean, he's been a good actor ever since he was 12. Yeah, I think if you're kind of like a a really low-listing actor and you do a shit movie, like that kind of can you're kill effed. your career. Oh, yeah. But for someone like Daniel Radcliffe, he has Harry Potter to fall back on. Yeah. And it's just like, I mean, yeah, he chose to do Playmobil and that kind of sucked ass. But, I mean, look at the Harry Potter exactly just keep looking at harry potter yeah um so yeah i think he made a really good villain for this movie Absolutely. and i would love to see him in something that's maybe taken a bit more seriously yeah dude seriously like he it's he was played for laughs, I feel, because all of his henchmen were ridiculously taller than him. <laughs> it's true. But I I do feel like he has the potential to play a really intimidating uh villain. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely so, agree. I like I hope he gets that chance in the future cuz that would just be incredible. Um but yeah, with with Sandra Bullock, she's she's just a tough one to beat. She she's amazing. Yeah, she is so good. There's not too many films that she's been in that I've disliked. Dude, she's in one of my favorite comedies, and I know a lot of people because a lot of people have a love hate with Melissa McCarthy. I love her. I literally love her in everything that she's in. Uh, the Heat. Please tell me you've seen that. I have seen the heat. I love that, <laughs> that movie. Her and Melissa McCarthy are a dream comedy duo. They they're, are fantastic uh, together. Just totally going off of like a tangent. My, I think my favorite duo that Melissa McCarthy's been a part of was with uh, Jason Bateman in Identity Theft. <laughs> oh, I freaking <laughs> love that movie. Uh, like I said, total side note, and we'll get back on track. Um, but yeah, Channing Tatum, he he doesn't his comedic delivery it just doesn't always work for me. Really, I am the complete opposite. It always works for me because, in my opinion, like with the Jump Street movies, he has better comedic timing than Jonah Hill. I think he's funnier in those movies than Jonah Hill. That's a bold statement. I'm keep, I'm going with it. I think I think Channing Tatum really gets comedy in my opinion, and he has very com- good comedic timing. So that's why I put him number two. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough sell for me. I, I I just think he's just lacking a little bit. Like, have I seen stuff of him that's made me laugh? Yes. 
like given a genuine laugh, but most of the time it's usually just like a chuckle. <laughs> I'm offended. I I know it's it's tough cuz I know I'm in the minority with that with that statement, but it just doesn't quite pull it off for me. No, I mean, I'm and sure. And I'll I... say this too. He barely made my number 3. <laughs> Damn. The only reason that he didn't is because I he was in the movie longer than uh Divine Joy right. Randolph. So the oh, person who played Brad Beth. Pitt. No, Brad Pitt was was not in it long enough to. Yeah, Brad Pitt was Brad Pitt in this movie. He was great, but you know. Yeah, I mean, it was funny seeing him in this movie. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think um, yeah, Divine Joy Randolph just killed it a little bit ho- better. And she, no, that, that's she, if fair. she was in the movie more, she would have freaking cracked. She would have knocked that's Channing fair. out of the way. She needs bigger roles. Dude, I agree. Like, freaking, have you seen Office Christmas Party? Yes. I freaking loved her as the security guard. I wanted more of her. I'm Dude, pretty sure that was her, wasn't it? Bunch of shit. A lot. She does a lot of voice work. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Like, she was in the Madagascar TV series. Um, hmm. She plays a detective in Only Murders in the Building. She's doing a voice in the new Puss in Boots movie. Nice. Uh, she's in Trolls. The first or second? The second. Okay. Yeah, she's she's done a lot of stuff. But I I love her. Like she's really really good at selling a lot of the stuff that she does. Agreed. So like I said, the only thing keeping her from top 3 was screen time. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Uh, but yeah, so that's my uh my top three or my justification for my top three. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. So where are you sitting with acting? Uh, you know, honestly, acting is my highest rating so far. Um, just because I feel like honestly, all of my top three, just bring it up, especially Danny Radcliffe. So I am actually going to go an 85. I am actually going a little bit lower. So I'm, like I'm just going to point lower than you, so I'm at an 84. So the averages are acting category to an 84.5. Not bad. All right, moving on over to character development. Um, I think we can both agree, Loretta. Channing Tatum. I'm just kidding. Channing yeah. Tatum. Yeah. So doing it based off of Loretta Sage, and I feel she had a pretty decent arc. Like she did, honestly. I think I've seen worse. Yeah, it's just I think like they kind of had her at like a standstill for a really long time throughout this movie and then they gave her like a a decent arc near the end. Like, yeah. It's like the last like fifteen minutes maybe. I agree. Like you say, it's it's really at a standstill for most of the movie, but then at the end, it literally just skyrockets into something new. Yeah, it's it's like she has this, like once they find this treasure and they realize what it is, and they realize that it's oh, it's a um, it's a symbol of love. It's not like a priceless treasure. It was a priceless treasure for the king and queen, but it's not necessarily one that's like has any real value. I think when she kind of discovered that, like that symbol of love and opening your heart and like seeing this woman who grieved for her husband to the point of creating this shrine around him for her grief and seeing what, like basically what that did to her kind of softened Loretta's heart enough to be able to let a new person into her life 
which if you if you think about where she was at the beginning where she's just like total depression and isolation and like what the description said like being a recluse it is a really solid arc it's just oh yeah absolutely <laughs> it's just flatlined for a majority of the movie and then beep at the end but it just brought back to life clear <laughs> yeah so it's like it was good but it was all at the end so it's like yeah. how good exactly was it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. Like I think you did have some moments where they were kind of growing close to each other. Yeah. But those weren't she it's like she was just fighting back a little too hard. So, like I said, I think the whole setting up that she has a crush on him at the beginning would have really helped with those moments and shown, like, hey, here's some, like, inner struggle that she's having and and given us a little bit more to work with as she progressed to the realization that she had at the end. Yeah. No, that's a good point. So, I mean, I'm not super high with my character development. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, question is are you higher than your writing yes I'm thinking either like the highest that I would be willing to possibly give it is like an 80 but I'm leaning more towards like the solid 70s or the the stronger 70s okay what about you Uh I'm in the same boat as you, so I'm going to give it, I'll give it a 78. I'll go a little higher than you. I'll give it a 79, right. which averages out to a 78.5. All right, moving on over to effects. I, there were issues. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Um, there were a lot, especially when um they were standing on like one of the mountaintops. I I think because I watched this with my sister, and I think I like leaned over to the to her. I'm just like, they had to know that that looks way too CGI, right? Or like too way too green screen. That it right? looked horrible, <laughs> like so bad, dude. It it was rough, and I watched this on my freaking phone. Oh God! Oh, that's it. yeah. I watch yeah. I watch this on a TV. Ooh, yeah. You know it's bad when you can really see it on a phone, dude. It was so bad. I like it. My true test on whether something like it, when I'm able to stream it, whenever I'm watching a movie, to truly test to see like, hey, am I just being a picky asshole, or is this really bad? I will pause on on a scene and most of the time it's just me being picky and being like yeah it looks super fake this looked horrible paused as well (laughs) oh shit it was so bad like me who's i mean i would still i would consider myself an amateur like photo editor could have done a better job than that. Wait, what did you consider? What kind of editor? Like a photo editor. So, but no, like what kind of ranking would you, did you say your average or above amateur amateur? Okay. Yeah. I'm definitely a lot lower than Caleb. Um, so I probably couldn't do better than this. Um, but I, I feel you could have really. Oh shit. Yeah. I think if you, it was it was if just a matter of colorization, Caleb, like the color correction. If they would have okay. just corrected the color a little bit, maybe put a little bit more effort into everything, it would have worked better. Yeah, you know, fair enough. Um, another thing: did the lava that was destroying the island look garbage as well? Oh yeah, dude. Oh, so bad. Yeah, not good just not good 
<laughs> There's a there was not a lot the... of effects that were good. The only stuff that I feel like was somewhat decent were like the gunshots and the occasional explosion. Yeah, I guess that's where a lot of the budget went to because the budget of this movie was sixty eight million. Dude, even some of the campfires looked like shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm not even in the seventies with my effects. Oh, dude, me neither. I'm so, just gonna say that I'm at sixty five. Uh, shit, I might, I might be on the same level as you. <laughs> Hell yeah. I I might. No, I'm giving it a 65. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll be nice, but no. Forget that. <laughs> All right, so our effects has come to a 65. Moving on over to music. I do not remember the music worth a shit. I don't either. And I don't, they didn't have any like famous songs or anything in this, did they? Not that I know of. I feel like this could have used some. Like, how did they not play Welcome to the Jungle? I'm just saying. Like, yeah, that one. Like you have to play that song? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, usually when it comes to them being in, like, a jungle movie, Cedar's like, well, you have to work in Welcome to the Jungle. It's a necessity. Yeah, I'm looking right now. The only one that I'm, like, recognizing is the final countdown. Which I'm pretty sure they played when Dash did his whole entrance at the the book tour opening. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Everything else looked like, yeah, it was like opera shit and just like the general scores. So, I mean, you're not getting points for Final Countdown on this, unfortunately. I barely would raise it a point. So like I would I give it wouldn't a six. even raise it a point. Really? And I love I mean, Final I Countdown. Oh yeah, I do too. I know I was at a five, so I'll go to six. Yeah, that's about where I was at too. I mean the the music worked for the scenes, but I think it just maybe needed something to give it that umph. Oh yeah, definitely agree. At least, like, give us a cool climatic, climactic song when with the climax of the movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, I would have been even, f- like, fine if they... If they played, like, a super slow, dramatic song when... With that, um... The realization of what the treasure was. Yeah, that would have been great. Yeah, I think that would have helped it. At least bumped it up to like a, a 7 or an 8. Yeah. Alright, next up we got costumes. Which there was only one real costume of note. Sandra Bullock's uh, suit. Yeah, the sequin suit. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was great though. That was great. I loved it. It was super funny to see her walking around in that. And I'm glad that they put her in, like, some reasonable boots. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Um, So I really liked her her outfit. Channing Tatum's was, I mean, as plain as plain can get. It was just a white t-shirt and jeans, I'm pretty sure. Or, like, cargo oh, pants. I was, yeah, I was going to say, isn't it cargo pants? Yeah. Then Brad Pitt was in kind of like the, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, just replace uh, the cargo pants with jeans. Yeah, so I mean, I'll I'll definitely give you some points for for Sandra Bullock. What about Daniel Radcliffe's white suit? Ooh, that actually was a really good outfit. I'll I'll give you some points for for that one too. Where do you uh? <sighs> Maybe a seven. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. All right, so that averages it out to a seven. Or puts us at a seven. All right, last up, we got our own personal score. So where are you sitting at? Uh, Overall, uh, I had a good time with this movie. Um, I honestly didn't didn't know what I was going to think with this movie because I I think I watched the trailer like once and I thought it just looked okay. 
Um, but considering that, you know, Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum are in a movie together, um, I'm, I'm basically sold if you have those two in any movie. Um, but you know, I'm really glad that I watched it. I had a good time. Um, it's not great. Um, it definitely has its problems, especially in the uh, writing and character development area. And, and the effects. Um, yeah, let's not forget effects here, people. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, overall, uh, I had a good time. Uh, I laughed. I did not cry. Sorry. Um, but... Yeah, I had a good time. Uh, I think I've said that. I said that way too much in my reaction. <laughs> Just like, uh, it, are you trying to convince yourself? <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? Maybe a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I am going to give it a solid 80. That's being nice. Really? I, I feel it is. <laughs> Like okay, Damn, don't I'm, get me I'm wrong. Pretty... I yeah. I I agree with you. I did have a good time watching this movie. There was just so many things that kept pulling me out of the movie. Like yeah. s- like we said, super shitty effects, dialogue that went on way too freaking long, <laughs> and just other random shit throughout. Um, I do think that this movie did really good at taking some some brave steps like when they freaking shot Brad Pitt in the first 10 minutes yeah, of seeing him god damn that was insane yeah that was super cool just to see them be like it felt ballsy cuz i'm like ah eh, Brad yeah. Pitt's just going to be like the butt of the joke for a majority of this and so when he died i was just like oh great like this is good <laughs> <laughs> oh great it's about damn time yeah because I, I was so afraid that they were just going to use him as a stupid joke the entire time no that's fair and so just the like eliminating him was just helped improve the movie for me a little bit but yeah like it's just <sighs> for me it was just it was as average as average can be in a not good way so I think if this was, I think if the effects had been better and the writing would have been a little bit stronger and just maybe made those di- those changes that I, I talked about where it was just like, hey, mutual crush, I think that would have put me up at an 80. But this is a movie that I do not plan on ever <laughs> revisiting. Damn. Well, no digital code for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of like a good one and done for me. So, okay. fair enough. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna be at like a seventy six. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. But that will average our personal score out to a seventy eight. And with that, that concludes this week's breakdown. And the final All Bros letter grade for The Lost City has come to a C+. Okay, not bad. It's been a long time since we've had a, a C plus on, on the show. It has. Yeah. It has. Like the last one we did wasn't even one that we did an episode on. It was the. What was it? It was I want you back. Oh shit! Wow. Um the the last one that we had an episode about was uh, Stone Cold. Holy sh! Wait, I yeah, wasn't so, on that. So it's it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a long time since we've had a, a C plus movie. So. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that. No, I'm not either. I think that's perfect. Same here. Like I always kind of. I don't know about you, but I always kind of have an idea of where I hope the movie ends up. Oh, yeah, same. And this is exactly where I, I figured it would. <laughs> no, no, I, I can agree. Yeah, so let's see. Let's compare this to some of our other C-plus movies. If I can find it. <laughs> 
Hold on, for some reason it's not showing up on my thing. Okay, here we go. I don't know why I was sh why it wasn't showing up. <laughs> hmm. All right. So the lost city, like we said, is sitting at a C plus, and that puts it at a seventy seven point two five percent. So comparing this to other C plus movies, this puts it above the Strangers Pray at Night. Yeah, which is fair. at a which is at a seventy seven point one eight. Uh, puts it above the Boondock Saints, which is at a seventy seven point one two. Puts it above the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, which is at a seventy six point nine one. Puts it above Unhinged, which is at a seventy six point eight seven. And then finally puts it above Stone Cold, which is at a 76.5. All right. Yeah. Then going the opposite direction, it puts it below Aquaman, which we have at a 77.3. Uh, puts it below Spider-Man, which is at a 77.49. So the first the, Sam Raimi Spider Man. This is so crazy that the, the movie's that low. Yeah, but I mean, we've looked back at the scores before, <laughs> and every okay. single time we're like, "Okay, I get it." <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, let's see. It puts it below Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four, which is at a seventy seven point seven, and then. Puts it below the babysitter, Killer Queen, which is at a 77.82. And then finally puts it below Old, which is at a 77.87. Alright, not bad. Oh wait, did I say 77.87 for Babysitter? I think you did. I My mistake. Babysitter, Killer Queen was 77.82, then Old was 77.87. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I think it has a pretty decent home. No, I agree. Absolutely agree. So, yeah, not dis not disagreeing with this one nope, in the slightest. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Anyway, that concludes this week's headliner. Um, if you guys like this episode and want to check out more of our stuff, you can... Follow us on any podcast hosting platform that you guys can think of. You can catch all of our episodes on YouTube. Our YouTube's actually been doing super well lately. Hell, awesome. Hell yeah. Like, I think our Top Gun episode had like 170 views. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's yeah, awesome. it had like a shit ton. Anyway, at least for us. <laughs> No, dude, that's awesome. Don't say that. No, <laughs> <laughs> I love that for well, us at least. I mean, it is. When, I mean, when you if you're comparing us to like freaking Markiplier or some shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good point. Good point. Like him, he's just like, oh, I get like 177 like million. <laughs> Must be nice. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, nah, he puts in the work. Yeah. But anyway, just. Thought we'd throw that one out there. Uh, <laughs> if you want, you can follow us on social media where you can hit us up with an episode idea. If you want to join us for an episode, like we would love to have anyone on. Um, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, all at the All Bros. Um, you can also check out our website, which is tinyurl.com forward slash the all bros, where you can find links to everything that we do. Um, and you can find links to our merch store, which is currently on T Public. I haven't posted anything new in a really long time, so I probably need to do that. Yeah, because uh, Sam is already asking for those Gacy Gazette. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like. <laughs> We, I'll, I'll get those on there. I promise. <laughs> I'm also still freaking making my way through the backlog of 
going back to um, Teespring. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So that one's taking a shit ton of time. <laughs> but we will get it on there, I promise. Yeah. It's coming soon, Sam. Yep. But yeah. So with that, this con- that concludes this week's episode. Um, you guys can look forward to us breaking down Last Night in Soho next week. So be sure to go watch that movie and in preparation for next week's episode. Um, currently, it is on HBO Max, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, pre- yeah, I'm pretty sure that I saw it on there as well. Yeah, so... Be sure it's also to go check on 4K it out. and Blu-ray if you want to, you know, support local, support physical media. Hell yeah. Just saying. <laughs> but yeah, so you guys can look forward to that next week. Until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we'll catch you guys next week. Deuces. So long.